Is Nvidia lying about their new 5000 series GPU performance? Well, it's not that easy to explain. First of all, why am I saying that? There seems to be a few people that say Nvidia is uh, faking frames or faking frame rates with their new DS DLSS 4.0 technology. And I just wanna explain that and clear up some things why and where those huge frame rate increases come from and why this can be positive and why this also can be negative for some things. First of all, I wanna explain the tech behind this. DLSS 4.0 is a combination of the DLSS upscaling technology, so which we have seen starting from the RTX 2000 series where it was upscaling and was using AI to help the upscaling and therefore make the picture actually look close to native resolution, even if you were only running like half the resolution or somewhere below the native resolution, which actually worked quite well. I was impressed at that time that it looked as good as it did. AMD followed up with FSR, which did a similar thing, although not utilizing as much AI post-processing as NVIDIA was, but FSR was kind of open source and could be used by everybody and which we are going to talk about today as well, is actually something that can do the same thing as DLSS 4.0, just not as an extensive amount and uh, not utilizing AI, of course. The second major thing that now is included in the DLSS 4.0 technology is frame generation. And frame generation is kind of interesting because you have to, this is also nothing new. For example, back in the day when uh, high Hertz TVs were all the rage, um, those TVs were also, or would also insert black screens in between frames to make animations seem smoother than they actually were. They were inserting extra frames to make animations look smoother, but this wasn't really any smart technology. It was more like a, and you, if you would use it for gaming, it was just not really meant for that. Now with the frame generation, we see the same thing used. So you have a, like, let's say you have about 30 FPS in a game because maybe your PC cannot push anymore. And that's usually the case in a lot of modern games like Alan Wake 2, for example, which needs a lot of GPU power, otherwise it just won't run at any higher frame rates. You can see that even on high-end cards and uh, WQHD resolution, or even on full HD, if you turn on ray tracing and put it on max settings, a lot of cards struggle with that game and that's what we are going to use in a demo later on as well. What frame generation does? Well, the kind of name says it all. It will generate frames in between the normal frames that you have and will insert them so that the animation looks a lot smoother. That works well. And even like the generic method that FSR uses that you can also use on any graphics card with the lossless scaling tool, even that works quite well. Though I wouldn't recommend to use it below like 40 FPS or so because then the input lag gets a bit of a hit. So what Nvidia did now, they are using AI to pre-calculate your movement or pre-calculate what the next picture is going to look like. And therefore they are trying to achieve a better quality, so that's the first aspect that they are trying to achieve, as well as a lower input latency. Because the problem is when you insert a, or insert pictures in between, let's say it's only one, so you go from 30 FPS to in theory 60 FPS, which is already a huge jump, and you have to input one picture every other picture, so the input lag is still at the same level as it would be with 30 FPS. And the issue is there, if you go even lower, like Nvidia showed with Cyberpunk going from 25 FPS to 240, well, the 240 FPS are still going to feel like 25 if you wouldn't use the AI methods to get your input lag down. To use the AI to get your input lag down with kind of predetermining what the next image is going to look like. 
And this with the NVIDIA reflex tech that basically lowers the input lag, then that might be a huge step forward. Although we have to see if that actually works as well as it does or as well as it is advertised. Because I don't see the 25 FPS values going to 200 FPS and that's still feeling like even 100 FPS. I think it's going to feel like maybe 60 which is still a huge improvement, don't get me wrong, but looking at the two, uh, 25 FPS to 240 FPS, that might be something that is not a realistic scenario that we are going to see in all games. Also, DLSS 4.0 usually has to be supported by the games to get the full experience, so the full upscaling experience, as well as the full frame generation experience. So. It is not as versatile as, for example, FSR, which you can use in every game. Coming back to frame generation though, this is where it gets interesting. While yes, obviously from 30 FPS, if you would insert one frame, then you would only get to 60 FPS. But what Nvidia showed is going from 25 to 240. Well, they obviously used frame generation in conjunction with DLSS. So they also lower the resolution, so upscale the picture and also use frame generation. But there was multiple frames, so they put in multiple frames in between the real frames. And that's why they say the amount of frames or amount of pixels that are actually rendered is really, really low compared to those who are basically AI generated. And that's the kicker because the AI generated let's say the AI generated frames or pixels, they are obviously, they have to work in order to make this whole process work. And you can insert more pictures even with the AMD FSR tool. So I can show you, you can go in Alan Wake 2, for example, if you, I would insert one picture and go from, from, for example, 35 or so FPS to about 65 to 70 FPS, that works pretty well and it actually feels very, very smooth. Even the input lag gets a bit better, I'd say, than if you would run 35 uh, FPS in general, like native. But for example, you can also, with that tool, insert up to 20 frames in between each frame. So you could also get 350 FPS. Yes, that might work, but uh, Obviously with a tool like a third party tool that is using a generic upscaler or a generic frame insertion method that won't work as well. As you can see in the video, it looks it, it smears all, all over the place and uh, it's just not really that great. But like I said, inserting one frame works well. So what does that have to do with fake frames? Well. Of course, as I said, the amount of pixels that are actually rendered by the GPU are quite low. And that is that is the reason why Nvidia or why many people claim that Nvidia is cheating with their benchmarks, for example, with the 5070 against the 4090. Nvidia told us, well, the 5070 is going to be as fast as the 4090, if not even faster. And that is with using newer technologies. So DLSS 4.0, in what exact fashion they used this, so how many frames were generated in those benchmarks, they didn't tell us. So nobody really knows, but the improvement in technology that you go from, uh, that you get from DLSS 3 to DLSS 4 um, probably will be able to account for some of the performance gains in comparison to a 4090. So the raw graphics processing power of that graphics card is probably not going to be as much of a difference compared to the last generation as they say it is. It's probably going to land more in the realms of a 4080, if even that. So we'll have to see how the benchmarks turn out and how much faster the card actually is. And that's what people seem to be mad about. Well, I hope I could enlighten you something or a bit at least about this topic. And as I said, if you have any questions, leave them down below. If you have any additions, of course, uh, if, you, if I missed something, also let me know because there might be some interesting stuff I'm actually missing. I would be really interesting in some interested in some feedback. And as always, have a nice day. Bye.